So as we head into the change of season from late summer into early autumn, ultimately into winter, we make changes in the garden. However, I want to caution you against forgetting about the pesky fruit fly. This is the perfect opportunity to catch them as much as you can with this last little bit of sunlight and heat before they head into winter dormancy, which is ultimately going to set you up for a really successful spring and summer next year. So I'm going to show you some of my traps around the garden to show you just how many fruit flies I am still catching towards the end of March, early April, which is that exact transition between summer and autumn. Let's take a look. And then if you don't have any traps or you don't have anything in place and you can still get them, head out and do it. You will not regret it next year. Towards the end of summer, most of the squash plants and the cucurbits that actually attract the fruit fly start getting really tired and dying out. But what I'd like to caution you against is pulling them out just because what this allows you to do is still get, as you can see here, and I'll show you up close, you still get a few zucchinis and other plants that are growing. And if, and if we have a look, they are still getting stung. So what I am busy doing with this is, firstly, I'm busy collecting all the stung fruit. And secondly, I'm busy creating an environment for the fruit flies to still come in. And then what we're doing is putting traps in place to be able to catch them. Right above the zucchini I've showed you, there's a trap. And as we go up, you can see there's a climbing zucchini over here, which is also still getting stung. But what it's doing is it's allowing me to catch huge amounts of fruit flies. And I'm, I'm not kidding you when I'm telling you I'm catching 10 to 20 fruit flies a day, still this late in the summer. So let me open this one up and show you what we're getting. This one is about 1.8 meters high. And if I show you that very, very top one, you can see the sting mark on there. So what I'm doing is I'm regularly checking that one I'll pick off as well. So to make sure none of the larvae end up in the soil. But in essence, picking the fruit that are being stung, but still attracting the fruit flies so that I can reduce the numbers for next year. So there you can see, a huge amount of fruit flies. There's some of the oriental fruit flies, those orange ones in the corner there, which in South Africa, a lot of people refer to as the pumpkin fly, but it's not really a pumpkin fly. It's actually you know, called the oriental fruit fly. But yeah, you can see this one, 1.8 meters, late summer, still catching a huge amount of fruit flies. Here's another fruit fly, fruit fly trap from the same area in the garden. And at the top there, you can actually see one busy flying that has been caught. It's up at the very, very top there, quite a small one. That one is, has got spotted wings and quite a V shape. And that means it's the Mediterranean fruit fly. So you can see this specific fruit fly trap, which is a combination of the Moskisan McPhail trap, which has then got the serotrap bait, which is a hydrolysized protein. Um, there you can see it right over there at my fingertip. And I don't want to open this one to show you how many it's actually caught, just so in case that guy doesn't get out, but you can see it's catching. This one has just been caught. Uh, and let's go look at some more. Now you'll see I mentioned the serotrap that I'm using for this. This is the actual serotrap system. It comes in its own bottle with a hanger. And you can see at the top there, there's entry, entry points for the fruit flies to come in. And if we have a look around here, that's a normal fly, but right next to it is a fruit fly. And right here, you can see two oriental fruit flies, which is also called the pumpkin fly. And you can see the stinger on that one, just absolutely devastating. Now we're heading into a different part of the garden. This one is more on the food forest side, but you can see I still have some squash growing here. They're still getting stung, and I actually saw a little fruit fly flying around the other day. This one is just put on the ground. It's not actually hanging, so it just shows you if we look inside. There are fruit flies everywhere, different types of fruit flies. Um, and it shows you that even on the ground with this trap system, we are catching a lot of fruit flies. There's a very, very nicely freshly caught oriental or pumpkin fruit fly 
just sitting there at the top and then quite a few little Mediterranean ones. Look at the size of that one. That is a massive, massive fruit bite. Let me pull it out and show you. So there you can see a nice big fat fruit fly. And you can see, pulled it out, catching them. And if we look inside, its buddy is sitting right over there. So you can see a highly efficient system this and what's really nice about this is it's just a liquid and as soon as the liquid runs out you just top it up it's really cheap and you can see what's really nice it works at a variation of heights it doesn't have to be at a specific height this one you can see is on the ground other ones that i've showed you are sitting at 1.8 meters above the ground here's one that's in my guava tree and the reason why i have it here is because i don't want any guava stings and um, it's the same McPhail Moschisan trap and if I move it around you can see up at the top there there's a freshly caught fruit fly but with this one it's very milky so it actually they get absorbed quite quickly into the mixture and then just disappear underneath you can see a few of them surfacing when I move it around but if I show you what the guava tree looks like you'll see I don't have a single sting on any of my fruits. So now we're in a completely different part of the garden. Now we are in the food forest. And even though this olive tree is not bearing any fruit I've hung it in a strategic position because I want to try and catch as many as I can and if I open this up and I can actually show you from this corner there are multiple freshly caught fruit flies so this one is inside a tree that doesn't even have fruit and I'm busy catching fruit flies so you can see how important it is to this late in the season, make sure that you have your traps up, that you're catching flies, because what these flies would be doing is finding places to lay their eggs, and then you're gonna get absolutely annihilated next, next year, spring and summer. Okay, then inside the fruit forest, we have two more traps. Here's one more. I'm gonna make sure we don't have any fruit flies flying around. And this one you can see has caught a lot. It's also caught a few normal flies, but you can see there's a pumpkin fly, oriental fruit fly. If I turn it around, there's another one in the corner, there's another one over there, so I can count. That's a Mediterranean fruit fly over there. I can count one, two, three, four, five that are freshly floating on the top, which means since this morning, I've caught five. They do sink to the bottom pretty quickly, so you know what's fresh and what's not. So here's one trap in a food forest hung above beans of all things and you can see it's just very much just a you, you put them out and catch whatever you can and um, at this point in the year they're not very specific about where they're flying so they don't have to be underneath a cucurbit or pumpkin or squash you can hang them anywhere it's just a matter of catching as many as you possibly can now let's have a look at the last one. This one is also hanging pretty low and it's above a collection of beans over here. Um, and this one has also caught a lot more. And once it focuses over there, you'll see this guy up at the very top here, over there. That is a Mediterranean fr fruit fly. And if you look carefully, you can see it is still busy moving. So this is as fresh as fresh can get in terms of a catch. It's a pretty big Mediterranean fruit fly and without a doubt, if I didn't catch this guy, those eggs would have been in the garden and I would have had a whole generation of fruit flies chomping away at my food for next year. So live action, catching them in a highly efficient fruit fly system. So now that you've seen how many fruit flies I have been catching in real time in this relatively small garden of mine in an urban setting. Let's do a quick recap of what you can do. You can see this is the, the Serra trap that I'm using, which is for me a highly, highly effective solution. 
I've, I've tried other solutions as well, um, which are just as effective. However, what I've personally found is cost-wise, you just, you cannot beat it. It works out to about 80 Rand per trap um, as the whole thing. So I had, with the previous um, lure system that I had, I had to buy these McPhail traps to get it to work. So I had them and I, all that I do is I pour some of this liquid into this trap and and from running my own tests in the garden i do find that having the mcphail trap with the serra trap liquid poured into it is significantly more effective than the actual serra trap system that being said this costs extra money and i had them um, i am really happy with how these are catching flies and if you can only get this then it's perfect it's 80 rand you stick them all over the garden very very cost effective and then what you do is you can get a 20 liter refill which then makes it even cheaper so throughout the year as these um, evaporate and empty you just top them up with more liquid so what it allows you to do is through a very cost effective system have fruit fly traps up the entire year so i don't have to worry about smells or scents or pheromones running out or only lasting a certain period which is actually what happened to me and then I got absolutely nuked by fruit flies while I was trying to find a new system. This just runs the whole year through and it's highly effective. So if you don't have some look into getting it and make sure that you are controlling your next year's fruit fly, fruit fly population now because what you do now is really going to help in the long run. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope you're inspired to try this out and get something new going in the garden to control these terrible, terrible bugs. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my journey, please, please do that. I share a lot of trip, tips, tricks, advice, insights like this. Um, and if you find that you, any of your networks will enjoy it or find this particularly useful, please share it out, like, and ask me any questions you have about fruit flies the infestations that we have of fruit fly in South Africa. And yeah, until next time, happy fruit fly catching.